Hello there. Today we're going to talk about the Kiwi Ears X Chronicle Singololo. That's right, Singololo. <laughs> and uh, I know what you're thinking. Yet another collab, and it's critical. He's a friend of mine, so of course I'm going to say nice things. And unfortunately, this video is going to take a bit of a different direction because this is actually my least favorite of the critical IEMs by a significant margin. And I'm actually doing this video more because this product right here perfectly demonstrates the issues that I was talking about in that previous controversial video I did on how IEMs are worse than over your headphones, the ways in which IEMs are worse. This product is a good demonstration of that. And so in today's video, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, as usual, a disclaimer, this unit was sent over by Linsoul for us to check out. Big thanks to Linsoul for sending it in for review. Of course, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. And I also want to say that uh, the Singolo here, it is a disappointment for me because I've actually liked many of Critical's IEMs. I like, I think he goes for sensible tunings. And I am also a fan of the Kiwi Ears brand because they've made some other products that I have quite enjoyed, like the Orchestra Light and the Orchestra. I thought those were pretty good. The Quintet was also a very interesting IEM. It had some issues in the treble, but it was is it was a unique way of basically achieving a Harmon-like tuning. Uh, so Kiwi Ears, they're they're doing clever and interesting things, but this one really doesn't work for me, and I'm going to explain why. But first, this is where I have to give the massive disclaimer that we all should take a little bit more seriously, which is that. The experience that you have with IEMs is not necessarily universal. The experience you have with headphones, just anything that you are wearing that is an audio device and you're listening to, is not necessarily universal. And so what that means is that when I measure this product and evaluate this product objectively and I take an objective lens at this, I think, you know, there, this is actually going to satisfy quite a lot of people. I expect it'll do well for people. And I know, in fact, there are some people who've told me they like it. But for me personally... There are issues with this IEM that make it not just something that I prefer less than other IEMs or less than Critical's other collabs, but rather that this one I find to be particularly intolerable. It doesn't actually have that much to do with the tuning choice or the target that he went for, the goal that he set. Because I actually think that that goal is interesting and admirable. Um, so let's talk first a little bit about that. The idea is that you can get a distinct bass shelf with an emphasis towards the sub bass, with a single dynamic driver in here, which is what you can see right here. That's basically this product's claim to fame. The way that he is able to achieve that is with a Helmholtz resonator. That is an acoustic resonator, um, just for folks who are unaware of that. And uh, so this is a way of essentially contouring that region and making that sub bass more distinct. Uh, Critical, I think, talks about how this is a subwoofer-like response. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and whether or not that is a good thing is going to be a little bit determined by the person and how they want their IEMs to sound. I don't really have too many strong feelings either way. I've enjoyed products that have this kind of cut, and I've enjoyed products that are a little bit more uh, of a slope rather than a shelf. So uh, to me, I, I can see merits to both. Um, I don't have a strong preference there either way. And I'm just going to throw the graphs up on the screen here for you guys right away, just so you can see that, yes, it does actually measure reasonably well or generally in a sensible manner uh, with a couple of quirks here and there, of course. But, you know, it's it's reasonable. And this is measured, of course, on the BNK5128, which has the more accurate acoustic impedance. And that is one of the key benefits to this system, especially for IEMs. And there was a reason to talk all about this. I'll leave that linked in the description for those who are interested. Regardless, you can see that the intention here is to be somewhat of a neutral sound signature with a bass boost. And that is a reasonable tuning to shoot for. The problem is, in my ears, it does not sound like this. So this isn't entirely a fit issue, but certainly the biggest issue for how I hear it is a fit issue. So I think the tuning could be improved still by reducing that 4K region. I think it is a bit glary up there just by default. That's a nitpick. And it shouldn't actually be that bad. It should be pretty good. So it graphs reasonably well. But I want to take a closer consideration for why this product in particular is intolerable to me. Not just something that I don't prefer. Not just something that's just not quite my, not quite my tempo. Not quite my flavor, you know. Uh, in this case, it is one that I can't stand to listen to for more than a couple minutes. Uh, it's that shrill sounding. And basically what I'm talking about here is the length mode issue that I mentioned in 
that previous video. The length mode issue and basically the air volume of the canal in between the sound producing device and the eardrum, uh, that is an issue that can make an IEM be totally reasonable sounding to one person and completely intolerable to someone else. Add to that the fact that the HRTF needs to be assumed, the pinna effects need to be assumed, and this is a recipe for people having very strong preferences in IEMs because you're gonna have a lot more variation in terms of how they are perceived. And unfortunately, the included tips with this IEM were no help for this either. You get two sets of tips here. You get these white ones, and you get these black ones. None of these tips allowed me to get a seal. So I basically lost all the bass at first. So I had to swap to, well, I was swapping to all kinds of different tips because I have many at this point. But what I consistently found was that when I was able to get a seal, when I was able to get the full bass response, the bass sounded fine, but in that condition, it just sounded so much more shrill, specifically between six and seven kilohertz, right in the lower treble. So I'm basically using a tone generator to identify where various different resonances are or imbalances are. And for the way that it sounds to me, there is a very strong imbalance. Now, how do I know that this is just a fit issue and not to do with how the IEM just graphs by default and that, you know, we're reading it incorrectly or whatever. Well, let me just show you. When I listen to it normally, like it's fitting in my ears normally right now, I get the seal, I get the bass. This seating, this position is what sounds particularly horrible to me. But when I push them in like this, it actually sounds the way that it measures. So with this IEM, for me, the new meta is to basically walk around outside like this, pushing these in you know, further into my ears. This is just normal now. This is what life is. This is existence. While it's not exactly perfect or anything like that, it sounds good. And as soon as I let go, and after a couple seconds, the IEMs kind of just slide slightly out, and then it sounds horrible again. Now, there are a couple of factors in this. One of them is that the nozzle itself, it's a chonky nozzle. I mean, for those who are sensitive to chonky nozzles, this might also be an issue, but it's a, it's a slightly separate issue. The At the widest point, I've measured this to be around 6.4 millimeters for the nozzle, so you can see it is a little bit on the larger side here. But what I find is the bigger issue, and I can actually feel this as I'm pushing it into my ears more thoroughly, is this contour, uh, the side, basically where the nozzle attaches to the shell, is a bit on the bulbous side. And this is what causes it, in my ear at least, to sit a little further out of the canal entrance rather than where it might sit, you know, a little bit more flushly. <laughs> flushly <laughs> compared to certain other IEMs that have, you know, that have a nozzle that sits a little bit further away from the rest of the shell. So I can actually feel that more bulbous element pushing it out of my ears. Um, and this is what causes the issue. So for somebody else who doesn't have an ear canal that is shaped like mine, you probably won't get this issue. It'll probably fit the way that it does when I'm pushing them into my ears. But for anybody who has an ear canal that is shaped somewhat like mine, you're gonna probably have some of the same issues that I do, where it sits further out, and as a result, uh, you're gonna end up getting a different response than what you see on the graph. You know, I'm left in this weird position of saying, well, it does actually measure reasonably well, and it'll likely be well received by people who, for whom the fit is reasonable. And so, it's, it's a weird one. It's like, do I recommend it? Is it a good product? Well, yes, but also no. And as the Singolo demonstrates, along with other IEMs like the uh, Zero Two that Critical also released, we should be talking about IEMs in terms of some of these factors for how they fit and how that affects the sound that we actually hear, rather than just evaluating based on the graph looks good and somebody says technicalities are good, therefore it's good. Because I don't think that that's good enough. In fact, it's not good enough. We need to also be considering how these things change depending on insertion depth. And unfortunately, that's actually very difficult to measure with this particular product because it only gets a seal on the rigs with certain conditions, with certain tips. But this difference in fit, you know, it can be a subtle thing like this where it just slightly pushes it out of your ear because of the nature of where the dynamic driver is situated in the shell. And that can make or break the experience. So these are things that need to be considered a little bit more strongly, I think, uh, when we are judging these products to be good or bad. One other thing, the distortion. So this is actually why I was excited about this. 
you actually do have, as mentioned, other products that fit this niche, this kind of tuning at many different price points. But you don't, as Critical has mentioned, you don't have a single dynamic driver IEM uh, that does this. One of the advantages of doing this is that you get a quite low harmonic distortion compared to what you would get with uh, balanced armature configurations. Uh, so with those ones, you get elevated third and elevated fifth harmonic distortion. With this one, not only is the overall distortion lower, but it's also going to be second order when you crank it. So it's very low, even at high volumes, uh, compared to you know what you might find with other IEMs that use multi-balanced armatures or hybrid configurations. In any case, for me, this one's ultimately just a disappointment. And yes, if I think about this in terms of proof of concept, that's cool. But there's no scenario where I would personally choose this product over even Critical's Project Red, which is less expensive, for example. And if you look at the market for other products that are kind of within this price range, you got the Hexa, which, yeah, I mean, absolutely, I would take that over the Singolo. And then if you go a little bit more, you know, if you're looking for that Harman kind of sound signature, you can get the Simgot EM6L, which I would definitely recommend over the Singolo. Low. So in conclusion, if you're asking me, what is a reasonably well-tuned IEM under $100? that is likely to be well received for a wide range of people, I would include the Singolo on that list. But if you're asking me personally, do you like the Singolo? My answer is categorically no, it just doesn't work for me at all. And given that a lot of people are probably excited for this IEM, and I've just disappointed you, I hope that this review has brought you joy and that your day is filled with sunshine and laughter. Consider subscribing if any of this has helped you out or if you find it interesting. And if you are interested in more deep dive articles, that's also linked in the description that's up on headphones.com. And if you'd like to chat with me, you can also do so in our Discord, also linked below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.